In the turbulent storm of the French Revolution, one woman's fate stands out, the Princesse de Lamballe. Imagine living a life of unbelievable riches and power, only for your head to be put on a spike. A terrifying end. What secrets did this royal hold? Why did she meet such a brutal end? And, most chillingly, what unspeakable things happened to her? In the shadowy corners of history, we find tales that send shivers down our spine. You'll find all the answers in this video. Buckle up, it's going to be a dark ride. Downfall of Monarchy Alright, picture this. September 1792. The French Revolution's not just a protest, it's a full-blown rebellion against King Louis XVI and his posh pals. These aristocrats are splurging while the nation's in debt, and the everyday folks have had enough. France's financial crisis is worsening, the corruption sky high, and the royals, including the unpopular queen Marie Antoinette, are blissfully clueless. Come October 1789, the people snap. A group of women storm the palace, demanding food and justice. They reckon Louis is clinging to power, and they've had enough. Next thing you know, the royal gang shipped off to Paris for a reality check. Among those rounded up was Marie Theresa Louise of Savoy, also known as the Princess of Lamballe. The Princess. Now, let us tell you about Princess Lamballe, or Marie Theresa Louise of Savoy, as she was formerly known. She was tight with Marie Antoinette and held significant influence in the court. Despite being replaced as the Queen's favorite by the Duchess of Polignac, she remained in her position due to her efficiency and lack of ambition. She had married a man much older than her, who unfortunately died from syphilis just a year or so into their marriage. It's believed that this disease might have rendered her infertile. However, she was nothing like Marie Antoinette. While Antoinette was viewed as this frivolous, air-headed, spoiled foreigner who loved her luxuries and make-believe games, Princess Lamballe was seen as the more sober, grounded one. But don't let that fool you. Lamballe, despite her attempts at keeping a low profile, was a pretty well-known figure and not always for the right reasons. Remember, keeping a low profile for the French nobility still meant a considerable show of wealth and power. Around 1785, Lamballe got entangled in this whole messy scandal called the Affair of the Diamond Necklace. This was a crafty plot by con artists to swindle the queen out of a hefty chunk of change. And even though it was later proven that Marie Antoinette had no hand in the purchase of the said necklace, her name, along with everyone linked to the scandal, uh, got smeared. This was the last thing Lamballe needed for her public image. Here's the kicker. Lamballe's position as the head of the Queen's court was pretty controversial. That role had been scrapped 30 years prior due to the excessive expenses it involved. But Marie Antoinette was adamant about reinstating it, and she offered Lamballe a staggering 50,000 crowns. When it was suggested that Lamballe turn down the salary, uh, she was like, I refuse, considering it her right. This sparked outrage both within the court and among the general populace of Paris. You see, Princess Lamba wasn't exactly in need of that money. She was one of the wealthiest people in France, having inherited a fortune and lands from her late husband. To the struggling French people, particularly the Parisians, Princess Lamba was part of the problem. The tumultuous escape. In spring 1791, during the French Revolution, monarchy was under siege. Many French citizens still desired a king, but craved a constitutional monarchy. However, King Louis XVI didn't share their enthusiasm. When it became apparent that a considerable segment of France, especially Paris, wanted to abolish monarchy entirely, Louis XVI, his wife Marie Antoinette, and their children planned a secret escape to Austria, hoping to raise an army and restore their absolute rule. Their plan, however, went awry. Their escape letters were discovered, and they were apprehended en route, leading to their confinement at the Tuileries Palace in Paris. A year later, rumors of royal conspiracy with foreign powers to quash the revolution surfaced. Enraged, Parisians stormed the Tuileries on August 10, 1792. The bloody encounter saw approximately 200 rioters and 600 of the king's guards, officials, and nobles perish. 
One of those captured in the assault was none other than the Princess de Lamballe. And here's the thing, she didn't even have to be there. She'd fled France the previous year, shortly before the royal family's attempted escape, with the blessing and urging of Queen Antoinette. But the princess was nothing if not loyal. She came back to France and her queen in November 1791, after spending five months in England. Even in these dark, dangerous times, their friendship held strong. A suspicious return. So the princess comes back, right? But here's the catch. Her return is seen as pretty suspicious by the then all-powerful revolutionary government in Paris, and more critically, by the increasingly radical folks of Paris. The lower classes in particular were like this combo of a revolutionary army and police force in the city, and they had their eyes on Lamballe. They suspected her of being a messenger for foreign powers, delivering secret messages to the king and queen. In the summer of 1792, France was in a sticky spot, at war with Austria and Prussia, and things weren't pretty. Under the leadership of the Duke of Brunswick, the Austro-Prussian forces threatened harsh consequences if the French revolutionaries harmed Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. The rumors, fueled by the Duke's threats, started buzzing about an inside job in the prisons of Paris. The talk was of a signal triggering the release of prisoners, including political dissenters, dangerous criminals, and dreaded forgers, which inflamed the public. Even Catholic priests refusing allegiance to the revolution over the church were said to be part of this plot. Then came September 2nd when an armed mob attacked transferring prisoners, igniting a four-day massacre of over 1,200 prisoners. These victims, accused of treason or anti-revolutionary activities, were dragged to makeshift courts. Those found innocent were freed, while the guilty were, euphemistically, uh, conducted to the abbey or let go. Both phrases a grim signpost to their impending execution. The Gruesome End of Princess Lamba. Now, things are about to get pretty grim. See, the folks in charge were worried that gunshots would freak out the neighborhoods, making them think that Brunswick's army was already in the city. So instead of shooting, most prisoners were beheaded. And no, not by the infamous guillotine. That came into the picture the next year. At this time, people were using swords, cleavers, and so on. Some were even clubbed to death, as many popular etchings of the time depict. And for some, uh, the horror didn't stop at beheading. They were literally gutted, their insides put on display before their heads were removed. The city was drenched in blood, with hundreds killed at various spots. One of the victims was our Princess de Lamballe, who'd been arrested with ten others when the king and queen were moved to prison cells near the Tuileries Palace. The other ten, nobles and servants, were released, but not Lamballe. Her ordeal was particularly gruesome. A chunk of her head sliced off, assaulted in full view of the crowd, her abdomen cut open, and her intestines put on display. It was only after this that her head was decapitated and paraded around on a pike. And even in death, her body didn't find peace. It was desecrated, with her private parts and breast displayed to the mob. Only when the crowd finally dispersed was her head reunited with her body and buried. To the revolutionaries, her death was justice for a class that had oppressed them for ages. But the royalist, noble expats, and foreign monarchs were livid, promising to quell the revolution. Lamballe's tragic end became a propaganda chess piece, painted as a saint by royalist and a deserving power monger by the revolutionaries. Her story was spun in many ways for a century to serve various narratives. However, the actual circumstances of her death weren't as horrific as the stories. Yes, she was beheaded, like many others during those brutal times but the rumors and theories exaggerated the reality into a horrific spectacle. But tragically, 
What became known as the September Massacres was just the first step to the reign of terror that swept over France for the next two years, claiming tens of thousands of lives. And it all started with the gruesome tale of Princess de Lamballe.